Welcome back to the second part of the photographic tour of Fort Myers. And uh, in this presentation, we are going to start walking uh, eastward on First Street, discussing primarily most of the buildings, but not all, on the south side of First Street. This photograph here is taken about 1909. Uh, some of the features that you notice is the water trough in the center of uh, First Street. This is the Bradford Hotel, at this time a brick building. Uh, the other brick building is Heitman Store, but if you notice, the rest of the buildings along First Street uh, ha are all wood construction, and they would remain uh, this way until the 1920s. This is a photograph of the Crest Building taken in 1928. Uh, located on the uh, southwest corner of Broadway and First Street. Uh, it opened in December of 1927, uh, just prior to Christmas. 6,000 people would attend the opening. Uh, the store consisted of uh, three floors of uh, just about every item that you could possibly want. Uh, the building was built by John Morgan Dean, whom we will be talking about very shortly. Uh, Frank Alderman and Lucius Curtright, and it was leased to the Crest Company for 50 years. This is a photograph of a, the interior of the uh, Crest department store, just one portion of it. Again, there are three floors, and uh, you can see it's just jam-packed with uh, items. This is a current photograph of the Crest Building. Uh, you notice the identifying plaque. Uh, the upper two floors are apartments or condominiums. Uh, businesses occupy the ground floor. And most notably on the corner, we have our Starbucks coffee shop. This photograph uh, is looking eastward along First Street. Uh, the Franklin Hardware Store uh, was owned by Walter P. Franklin. This location was actually his third store in town. Uh, his first store opened in 1913. This specific store uh, opened in 1937 and would be around until the 70s. Uh, it is on the southeast corner of Broadway and uh, First Street. And as we uh, look down First Street and go across the street, uh, after we view the current photograph of the Franklin Hardware Store, we're going to be going toward this building right over here across the street. This is the current view of the old Franklin Hardware Store. It retains the name Franklin Shops. However, uh, it uh, caters to a completely different clientele. Uh, a very nice interior. It's been uh, completely renovated. And again, this is on the southeast corner of Broadway and First Street. This is a 1923 uh, photograph of the Morgan House. This is right across the street from the old Franklin Hardware Building. Uh, John Morgan Dean would purchase the property from the Sanchez family. Uh, he would renovate the Sanchez house and then construct uh, what became known as the uh, Morgan House. Uh, this is named after his mother's maiden name. And John Morgan Dean would then ultimately transform this property into the Morgan Dean Hotel. Uh, it retained names as either the Morgan Hotel or the Dean Hotel over the years. This is a photograph taken in the 1920s. It would open in 1924. Uh, John Morgan Dean was a furniture dealer from Rhode Island. Uh, he was also the uh, developer of Dean Park, which was located just east of the downtown area. Uh, the Morgan Hotel was uh, based on a European style. The upper two floors were the actual hotel rooms. Uh, the ground floor was primarily shops or businesses. 
and uh, this European style of hotel would be found uh, throughout the other hotels lining First Street. This is a photograph of the interior of the dining room of the Morgan Hotel. To give you an idea how uh, this was set up. Uh, this photograph is of the uh, Morgan Dean Hotel uh, years later. Now, initially, the hotel had 22 rooms. It would ultimately be enlarged to 92 rooms. Uh, they would expand uh, the lobby, which was on the ground floor in the interior. They would add a telephone booth for privacy when you were talking on the phone. And if you were to enter the side entrance over here, you would be able to see the remnant of the old Morgan house, that wood house from 1923. The remnant could be seen for a period of time afterwards until it was torn down. When John Morgan Dean uh, began to construct the hotel, uh, he requested that the city that he would be allowed to convert this alleyway, which at the time that's what it was, into a street. Uh, and this would allow his hotel to have two entrances, uh, the side entrance uh, and a front entrance. Uh, the city would approve it. And uh, it's important to note that in the early years of the city, uh, they would have either alleyways or streets heading down to the river which served a twofold purpose. Uh, one, it would allow breezes to come through into the downtown area uh, to cool the area off as much as it possibly could. And for aesthetics, it would also give a view of the river. This is a view looking north or toward the river uh, along Dean Street. Uh, and as you see, currently we have not taken the uh, uh, city father's advice as far as keeping the streets open for breezes or an aesthetic view of the river. We have a new uh, complex being built that will block off this area. But this is the current photograph of Dean Street. And again, John Morgan Dean obtained uh, permission to construct this street from the city when he built the hotel. We are now uh, looking back across the street to the south side of First Street, and we're going to be heading into the Patio de Leon. Uh, this uh, is an open area space behind the, uh, the old Leon Hotel, uh, a very nice area to walk around. Uh, and uh, when it was constructed, it was meant to be a leisure area in the downtown surrounded by uh, businesses. This is a photograph of the interior of the Patio de Leon. Uh, it was built in 1913 and 1914 by Peter Tonlier. Uh, he uh, uh, was from Michigan. He owned a chain of drugstores. Uh, and this was meant to be an open area, leisure area behind the uh, Leon Hotel. Uh, it had, among other things, uh, uh, an alligator fountain, uh, the Omar Theater, and several shops, and all of the buildings were decorated in either a Moroccan or a Mediterranean style of architecture. These photographs show two views of the alligator fountain uh, as it was years ago. This is the rear of the Leon Hotel, and we are looking out uh, right onto First Street through the opening of the Patio de Leon. Uh, and this is the Alligator Fountain as it exists today. Well, uh, back then in the Alligator Fountain, they had live alligators. Of course, people back then knew not to put their hands into the water. Today, of course, we can't do that. It would result in lawsuits. So the alligators present are more of a ceramic nature. Uh, attached to the side. This photograph sh is, uh, shows, uh, prior to the construction of the Leon Hotel, the wood building which uh, lined First Street 
We're looking out in this direction toward First Street. Uh, this is probably taken in the early 1900s. And this is a current photograph of behind the Leon Hotel inside the patio. Again, uh, this is the walkway toward First Street, and this is the rear of the Leon Hotel building. This is a period photograph showing the entryway to the Omar Theater. Uh, and uh, right near it, of course, is the Alligator Fountain. Uh, notice the uh, architecture design of the theater. It's a Moroccan style. And again, uh, most of the buildings uh, at that time uh, had this Moroccan or Mediterranean style, and they are retained today. This is a current picture showing the same point of view of the entryway to the Omar Theater. Of course, today it's changed quite a bit. This was the actual area where the doorway to the theater was. Uh, and the other side of this uh, a wall uh, is an elongated parking lot today. But that was the uh, actual theater building back then. This shows one of the establishments, uh, current establishments in the Patio de Leon. And again, uh, our iconic alligator fountain. And the uh, uh, 1025, which advertised happiness and beer. Uh, some country fans might know Tom T. Hall's song in which he says, I like beer. It makes me a jolly good fellow. It helps me unwind and makes me feel mellow. Well, this is the place to go, I guess, to uh, help yourself unwind to become mellow. And this is a current day photograph showing the entryway to two different shops. And again, uh, the Moroccan style or Mediterranean style of architecture abounds in this area. It's been retained over the years. This is especially uh, nice to see. This is a uh, close up of that uh, uh, decorative uh, lintel, if you will. Uh, and you notice the gold blue coloring. It's, it's really quite exquisite. On the opposite side of First Street, the riverside, if you will, uh, there is Bayview Court. Uh, and this is the entryway from First Street heading down toward Bay Street. Uh, it was built in the 1920s, mainly as a walkway uh, to the river, again, to allow in the breezes and to, for aesthetics. Uh, it was lined with shops uh, and uh, would connect, ultimately, uh, First Street with Bay Street. Uh, these photographs show uh, one building located along Bayview Court. Uh, and how it was transformed over the years in function uh, and slightly in aesthetics. Uh, in the 1920s, it was a coffee shop uh, in the downstairs area. Upstairs may have been uh, an office area or may have, maybe have been a small apartment. I don't know. Uh, in the 2000, uh, it was converted into uh, a lawyer's office. And this is a more current view of this. Uh, Bayview Court was lined with small establishments such as this. This is an aerial view of Bayview Court. Uh, along, this is First Street along here. And as you see, Bayview Court, we're walking down, and we're going to ultimately come to Bay Street uh, down over here. And again, all of the, the both sides were lined with small shops. And this is a current photograph of Bayview Court looking from uh, Bay Street back up toward First Street. Uh, this photograph uh, was taken in the 1880s. Uh, it shows the termination of First Street uh, ending right in the Caloosahatchee. Uh, and as you notice, buildings are lining both sides. Uh, 
And we're now going to talk a little bit about the waterfront and some of the changes that occurred. Uh, this is a photograph of the riverfront along First Street. Uh, this is taken in the 1880s to kind of give you an idea of how run down uh, the riverfront area had become. Uh, it was lined with uh, uh, falling down wood buildings and sheds primarily, uh, littered with construction debris and rubbish, uh, clogged with water hyacinths along its banks, uh, the sewage uh, would be dumped from the pipe effluents into this area, and there were also private outhouses present. Uh, the entire area was uh, in need of uh, refurbishment. Uh, it had an odor about it, and it had no aesthetic appeal whatsoever. Uh, and this would continue on until the early 1900s. Uh, this is a picture of the termination of Monroe Street back in the 1880s, uh, terminates into the Caloosahatchee. This is prior to the construction of the Monroe Street Pier. Uh, if you see in the distance, this is uh, the Henry Street Pier which we have another photograph coming up later to give you a better view of all these piers. But this is the Monroe Street termination in 1880. This is an aerial view of uh, uh, downtown Fort Myers today. Uh, the red arrow uh, indicates uh, the location of First Street. And again, the photo I just showed you was the termination of Monroe Street, which would have been uh, somewhere in this area here. Uh, this is Hendry Street, and the pier that I showed you in the distance would be coming out here. Uh, Jackson Street would also have a pier as well. Uh, you can see how all this area has filled in since. Uh, in 1907, uh, Tootie McGregor Terry. At this time, uh, Ambrose McGregor had died and Tootie remarried. Uh, she remarried, uh, doc uh, married uh, Dr. Marshall Orlando Terry. Both uh, Mr. and Mrs. Terry went to the uh, town council uh, requesting uh, beautification of the riverfront. And they proposed constructing a seawall 200 feet out to drain uh, the river and refill it with uh, dredging from the river bottom. And then they, they requested construction of a 75 foot wide promenade, which the town would own as a right of way and would go along the river to give like an aesthetic walk. Uh, and uh, the area would be filled in uh, with uh, shrubs and flowers and so forth. This proposal was initially met with approval by almost everyone in town. Uh, almost everyone in town knew that something had to be done uh, to the riverfront area. However, the riverfront owners uh, around the Fowler Street area and then moving uh, westward began to object to this uh, project. Uh, it was going to encroach upon uh, their property, uh, their view, and uh, as well as having a lot of people coming into their so-called uh, uh, rear yards, they disapproved. However, they in return, they would begin to construct seawalls that would extend all the way from Billy's Creek, which is off the map uh, in this direction, all the way down to Monroe Street. And the seawalls would be constructed. This is a photograph showing the land expansion of the riverfront in 1925. And again, First Street is going to be back here. We have uh, Bay Street uh, along here. Uh, and you notice the dredge pumping and filling in the areas extending Bay Street outwards. And uh, this shows you the three main piers uh, as they existed in Fort Myers. 
Uh, this is the Monroe Street Pier, a portion of it. Uh, the uh, video is blocking out the second portion, which is here of the Monroe Street Pier. This is the citrus packing plant when it opened in 19, I believe it was 1913 or 1915. It was the largest citrus packing plant in the world. The fish packing plant would be over here. This is the Henry Street Pier. And this is the uh, Jackson Street Pier. This is a photograph uh, showing the early con stages of construction of the Yacht Basin. This was, uh, it was started in January 1st, 1937. Uh, this is a sh taken a short time afterwards. Uh, it was a WPA project. The WPA would uh, fund $300,000 of the project, the city would cough up 135,000, and it did this mainly through tax credits uh, from the riverfront uh, owners. Uh, this entire project at the time was a national news story. Uh, it was uh, covered both uh, on radio and print media uh, continually. Uh, and it would ultimately lead into the construction of the Yacht Basin and the Waterfront Park as we know it today. Uh, this entire area would continue uh, expanding up until 2002. We are returning now to the south side of First Street. This is the southwest corner of First and Henry Streets. Uh, and this is the Stone Block Building. Uh, this was built in 1905 by Dr. Benjamin Matheson, and it was initially named the Smith Matheson Building, uh, but it uh, acquired the nickname of the Stone Block Building, and as you can see why it was called that. The building would evolve uh, into being the first national bank uh, the First National Bank was founded by Walter Langford and several other businessmen who were initially on the board of directors of the Bank of Fort Myers. The Bank of Fort Myers was the first bank in, uh, in the town. Uh, however, it was being uh, the head of the board of directors was Harvey Heitman and uh, Walter Langford and Harvey Heitman uh, could not see eye to eye on just about anything they looked upon. So uh, Langford and several other businessmen who were upset with Heitman's directorship uh, decided to form a competing bank, the First National Bank. Uh, its first location was in the Stone Block building. And these two banks would compete uh, for funding building construction and road construction, as well as lending practices. The Stone Block Building would be purchased in 1912 by Peter Tonlier. Uh, Peter Tonlier, if you remember, uh, created the Patio de Leon, which would be behind uh, what he renovated into, which is the Tonlier or the Leon Hotel. Uh, again, it is displaying a Mediterranean Moroccan type architecture, just as the patio behind it had. Uh, and it also retained uh, the European style of hotel in which the hotel room was on the upper floor and businesses and shops uh, were on the ground floor. This is a current day photograph of the uh, Leon Hotel. Uh, again, this was the old stone block building uh, renovated by Peter Tonlier and today I, I consider this building to be perhaps one of the most attractive in the downtown area, uh, well accented in colors, uh, as you can see, uh, and nice designs, uh, two balconies. Uh, the upper floor is condominiums, and again, on the ground floor, uh, we have businesses and shops. And this is a view of the uh, Old Leon Hotel uh, along First Street, again, uh, showing the balcony in one of the condominiums. Uh, 
And again, uh, this would probably be the stop where the walking tours would uh, relax for a little bit right next to the Bud Light sign. This is uh, going back in time, uh, 1908. Uh, we're looking up Hendry Street from First Street. And you notice the stone block building here with the sign for the First National Bank. Uh, but note that all the other buildings lining Hendry Street and First Street, uh, which you won't see off to the left, are of wood construction. Uh, the city was uh, racked by fires. Uh, from the, uh, the 1880s on uh, up until uh, a more efficient and modern fire department uh, was developed, as well as the conversion of all of these old wood buildings to uh, stone or block buildings. Uh, this is an uh, aerial view to kind of give you an idea of where we have been. Uh, so you can orient yourself. Uh, this is Broadway. We've gone through the arcade and exited the arcade. And over here is the alternative uh, history mural, little courtyard. We've come out there onto First Street. And right here is the Crest Department Store building, the old Crest building. Uh, we've come down. This is the Franklin, the old Franklin hardware store, now the Franklin Shops. Across the street, we have the uh, Morgan or the Dean Hotel building. Uh, we've continued on First Street and we've entered the Patio de Leon. If you remember with the Alligator Fountain, this was the old Omar Theater. Uh, and over here, uh, we then went across the street and uh, went into the Bayview Court area, which connects First Street to Bay Street came back uh, and we then talked about uh, the stone block building, which was converted to the uh, Leon Hotel. And that is over here. And now we are on First Street and Hendry Street. And we're going to be concentrating on the buildings uh, along the south side of First Street. This photograph uh, is looking eastward along First Street from the Hendry Street intersection. And uh, this is where what would become the new First National Bank building right here. Uh, this is called uh, the Earnhardt Block, this entire block from Hendry up until Jackson. But this is uh, the Earnhardt building. Uh, we have the Langford Building and then the Bank of Fort Myers is at the other end of the block. Uh, now, in 1914, uh, the first National Bank, which was on the other side of Hendry Street, moved into its new facility right here. Uh, this was a neoclassical design. It had Italian marble floors, extremely ornate woodwork. Uh, it cost about $50,000 in its construction. And uh, to give you an idea of uh, how this site looked uh, prior to this, uh, this was the E.L. Evans General Store uh, and the Phoenix Hall right in this location. And this is what it looked like before it became the bank, the hardware store or general store down here. And this, the Phoenix Hall was like the town meeting place at the time uh, for all sorts of uh, <clears throat> civic uh, social meetings would be held here. This is a similar view looking eastward along First Street later on. Uh, you can tell, of course, by the style of cars. Again, the First National Blank Bank building, uh, the Earnhardt building and so forth. The Earnhardt building was built by Harvey uh, Heitman. His middle name was Earnhardt, and that's how the building got its name. Uh, some people would refer to him as the father of First Street. Uh, at the time, all of these buildings along this block were wood buildings. And uh, uh, from here uh, down to here, and then on the other side of the Langford building, uh, he would construct uh, stone structures. 
He would begin by tearing down the wood buildings, and in certain cases, he did not have approval from the city. But the, uh, the city really didn't care because they wanted these wooden structures, which were becoming dilapidated and were fire hazards, uh, to be removed. And he took care of that for them. And this is a current photograph of the same perspective of the, the old First National Bank building, currently law offices, and the Earnhardt building, looking down toward the Lankford and old Bank of Fort Myers building. A uh, close-up of the First National Bank building. Again, as I mentioned, it's lawyers' offices. And at one point in time, I don't know if it's true now, but they would actually welcome visitors in to take a look at the lobby area, which, again, with the marble floors and the ornate woodwork. I don't know if they're still doing that currently, uh, but years ago they did. Uh, this is the Earnhardt Building, uh, constructed by Harvey Heitman. Again, uh, 10 bricks with white ornaments, ornamental trim, and green accents. Uh, on the ground floor were shops and businesses. Uh, offices were on the uh, second floor, all offices. Uh, today, we have condominiums on the second floor and uh, shops and businesses on the ground floor. This uh, brick portion of the block, this brick building here, is the old Langford building. It was built in 1911 by Taff O. Langford. Uh, in 1913, John T. Henry opened up the Grand Theater on the second floor. It was the first movie theater uh, in the city. And it was, it's important to note that it showed only, and I quote, morally clean movies uh, at the time. Uh, these were silent movies, and his wife would play the piano uh, to accompany, to the accompaniment of the silent films being shown. In 1925, it would be purchased by the Miller Brewing Company, and it would, uh, uh, in cert certain instances, be then called the Miller Building. Uh, but to uh, most people in Fort Myers, it would remain the Langford Building. This is a current photograph of the Langford Building. Uh, after the Miller Brewing Company purchased it, later on it would house the J.C. Penney's and the Diana Shops uh, before they would uh, then relocate to the Edison Mall. In the 1990s, uh, Bill Smith Incorporated would purchase this building and it would convert it to a restaurant with a mini marketplace. Here we are back in the 1920s, uh, going back and forth. This is looking westward along First Street here. And in reverse, uh, the Langford Building, uh, the Earnhardt Building, and at the very end is the First National Bank Building. And now we're going to talk or show just a little bit about the Bank of Fort Myers, uh, which was located in this building right here. This view shows uh, the Bank of Fort Myers Building, which is on the uh, southwest corner of Jackson Street and First Street. Uh, Harvey Heitman and several other businessmen would start the Bank of Fort Myers. It was initially a branch of the Citizens Bank and Trust of Tampa. Uh, its first location was in a small uh, uh, a business space next to his store. This is the Hartman store uh, at the time, I'm sorry, the Heitman store at the time, and it was the first bank location was right over here, and then this was constructed. It was said that the deposits uh, that were deposited in, I should say the amount of money that was deposited into the bank uh, opening day was greater than all of the money uh, present in the parent bank in Tampa. 
So this bank really took off at the time the, uh, the city needed a bank. And this is the end of part two. Uh, it shows an aerial view uh, looking westward of uh, downtown Fort Myers. This is the Bank of Fort Myers building, uh, the Heitman store, what, what become known as the Heitman store. Uh, we'll be talking about the arcade and uh, uh, the Bradford Hotel, which you see in the distance here. And off in the far distance is the Caloosahatchee with the Monroe Street Pier and a portion of the Henry Street Pier uh, to give you an idea. So this is the end of part two. Uh, we have one more part to go in which uh, we are going to be heading back on the primarily on the northern side of First Street and ending up back at the intersection of First Street and Henry. And I want to thank you very much.